Hey there, Fleet TV. Raisa here. Good to see you again. Today I am joined by an extra special guest, our Fleet Volunteer Morale Coordinator Cricket, Ruiz Klein. She likes long walks on the beach, disemboweling her toys, burrowing under blankets, but she's not allegedly here today just because she's cute. She's actually here today because I think our family pets or even just the birds outside your window are a great example of the topic we're discussing in today's video, STEM in unexpected places. How exactly do birds fly and how do the microchips in our dogs and cats help them find their way home when they get lost? Well, we don't quite have the time to tackle those questions today, but our friend Angel is going to be showing off a little bit of material science that you might be able to experiment with right at home in your kitchen. So in this video, I'm going to show you a sensory activity that is going to help you visualize or see what outer space can really look like. Today, we're going to be making galaxy Play-Doh. And here's what you need. A saucepan, one cup of flour, one third cup of salt, two teaspoons of cream of tartar, and then in another bowl, we're going to be mixing one cup of water, one tablespoon vegetable oil, and the food coloring of your choice. I want to make it a nice purple. If you have black, black would be much better. I only have primary color, so I'm going to use red and blue to create a purple. I have this glitter. You'll see all those little stars are really going to make it look like outer space. And I have some cookie cutters just to have some fun with my Play-Doh once it's all done. Why don't we go ahead and make this galaxy Play-Doh. Let's make this galaxy Play-Doh. I have my saucepan over medium heat. And in here, I wanna first mix these three powders. So, one cup of flour, one third cup of salt, two teaspoons of cream of tartar, I want to mix my liquids that come with the water. One cup of water, one tablespoon of vegetable oil, my food coloring, squirt of red, squirt of blue. I really want to get a nice purple. Feel free to use as little or as much food coloring as you like. And now I'm going to slowly mix this into the pan. My Galaxy Play-Doh is cool, it's ready to be decorated, and I'm really excited to fill it with a bunch of stars. Because it's Galaxy Play-Doh, it's supposed to look like outer space, and you know, scientists believe that the galaxy we live in, the Milky Way, has about 100 billion stars. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put a bunch of starry glitter on this Play-Doh. All right, here's my Play-Doh. It's cool now. You can see it didn't stick to this at all. Came out very nice. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add a bunch of these stars. And just knead it into this Play-Doh. I'm gonna pick up all these that I dropped. Beautiful. Okay, now it's time to have some fun and make a shape. And here is a star made out of galaxy Play-Doh. Look at all those other stars inside of it. Beautiful. Go ahead and try this at home. Okay, now that we've tackled galaxies far, far away, I think it's time for us to explore what happened a long time ago, right? So our fellow Fleetster Ariana is going to be showing off how you can create a time capsule and do some time exploration right in the comfort of your home. Hello everyone. I'm here to show you something you can make at home with your family right now. I'm gonna show you how to make 
a time capsule. What you really need is any kind of container that you can put away somewhere in your home for as long as you want until you're gonna open it again. I'm gonna put mine away for 10 years, so I'm gonna open it back up in 2030. I have a couple container ideas for you right here. One is a shoe box. A lot of homes might already have one of these lying around. Another is this awesome, it was a protein powder container, but I think it would work perfectly for this. It's plastic, it's big, and it's nice and clean and ready to be used. And then this mason jar. So if you have less space, maybe you'd wanna go with something like this. And then you're gonna pick a whole bunch of objects to put inside that somehow represent this moment in time right now. So how you define the moment in time right now is also a bit up to you. I'm gonna include some things from approximately the past few months. You can include things up to a year or two, or you can include things only, you'd be very strict and only include things from the past couple months. However, that's also up to you. Let me show you some examples of things I'm putting inside and maybe they'll inspire you for what you might put inside of yours. First is this local newspaper I have. It has the date it came out on it, which is useful, and relevant information about my community. You can put in a newspaper or magazine that is either local or even national, and it will, for one, have a date on it, and for two, have information about what's going on right now. Another thing I'm putting in is actually a letter to myself. My husband and I both wrote one. I put it just in this blank envelope and wrote do not open until 2030 on front but if you have a cute card that you'd like to use instead feel free to do that too. I'm also putting in a couple memories so I have this scavenger hunt that I did with my SciTech students. I'm putting in this list of my likes pretty much my favorites. I just came up with a whole bunch of different things and wrote down my favorite of those things and that is probably gonna change in 10 years. Pictures, um, I don't have a nice picture or photo printer, but these I just put in on my regular printer and they'll do the job. Um, just a picture of me, a picture of my husband, picture of my dog Willow, of course, you know I love her. Picture of my house, that might look different in 10 years, and pictures of a couple memories from recently. I also have these postcards from a couple of friends that I got recently that will be a nice memory. And then I've got some things that might be a little more practical. One idea is to put in different kinds of packaging or imagery that might change. If, if you have an ad for something that is popular right now, that might be interesting. I'm gonna put in this Burt's Bees lip balm because it's like my life and also because maybe the packaging will look different in 10 years and I can find it and compare and that could be interesting. For that, I also have a gum wrapper that is empty. You don't want to put food in, of course. And I have this Joe's O's box and I'm going to just cut out this part so that I can compare the logo in 10 years as well. I also have a couple of receipts, one from Costco, one from a grocery store because maybe I'll be able to compare the prices of the different items on these receipts and see if they've changed in 10 years. I have a couple recipes we've done recently that we loved that will be a nice memory. Takeout menus from restaurants we've gotten food from recently as well. So I hope that those ideas inspire you, but be as creative as you can. Try to put objects in that will really be either changed in 10 years or either way a good memory or something that was important during this time and you'll be like, wait a second, I forgot about that. Or wow, that's changed so much. I look way different or Willow looks way different. So I hope that you enjoy this idea and try it out. It's so versatile. You can use a container of any size, really. You can put it anywhere you want and you can store it for however long you want to. Enjoy this activity. Have a great time with your family and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Ariana. You got me thinking, what would I include if I were to make a time capsule right now? I decided I'd almost certainly include the books that I've been reading and this knitting project that I've been working on for far too long with no signs of it coming to an end. And uh, 
definitely can't forget the mask. No, seriously, don't, don't forget the mask. Now, before I leave you with some fleet fails today, I wanna to take a second and remind everyone that we're seeing now more than ever just how much science impacts us in our everyday lives. How many scientists and engineers were involved in the things that have caused me to start wearing masks when I leave the house and physically avoid my friends and family for their safety? How many scientists and engineers were involved in your last online shopping purchase? As long as you're asking these questions and wondering why our world is the way it is, you too are thinking like a scientist and I challenge you to spend as much time as you can these days asking those questions and wondering why. That's all I got today. Thank you so much for joining us for today's episode of Fleet TV and make sure you let it to let us know if you want to see our, uh, our, our chief volunteer morale coordinator back in some of these videos in the future. In the meantime, stay safe, stay sane, and we will see you all at the fleet or out and about. Bye bye, honey. You want to say bye bye? No? Are you tickling? Are you tickling? You want to say bye bye, honey? You want to say bye bye? Oh, hello. Oh, silly nose. Silly nose. Oh.